Hi everyone, how are you this week? Today is Friday the 13th, but for me, um, I find Friday the 13th to be a very lucky day. Uh, and, and everything is about how you look at it. So the reason I'm here today is to remind you to connect with your divinity. I don't know if you remember, if you subscribe to my newsletter, um, you, uh, or if you listen to my radio show, I talked about the only one um, resolution that you need. The only one resolution you need is to connect with your inner guidance system or your divinity. And that resolution is the mother of all resolutions because it then reflects or shows in every area of your life. It's, it seeps out into every area of your life. So, and I said to you, my resolution is to, is to come and remind you throughout the year to connect with that inner guidance or to connect with your divinity or your higher self or your consciousness or whatever you want to call it. And so I said that I would not only just, rem I, would, I would not only remind you, but I would also show you how you can connect. And I would speak more about that. So here I am reminding you once again to connect with your divinity. So what do I mean when I say, connect with your divinity or your higher self. So what I mean, here's one of the things that we do, we tend to do, is that we tend to forget that we are a divine being. I had forgotten too until I had cancer and then, and then I went into a coma and I pretty much died, all my organs had shut down. And it took that, it took that for me to remember who I am, it took that for me to remember or to know or to realize that I was connected, that I was connected to all of you, I was connected to everyone, every being, everything, every part of nature on this planet. But not only that, that I was connected to something far, far greater, the all that is. And we can call that, we can call it God, we can call it the universe, we can call it our divinity, our higher self, we can call it what we like, but we are all connected to it. We are all part of it. And sometimes it takes something big for us to realize that connection. I want you to realize it without having some, some negative trauma happen to you. I want you to know that you're connected so that you can, so that you can access it all the time. We tend to give our power away. We tend to think that what is outside, what is in this physical world, what other people say and do is bigger and more real than what we feel with our senses, with our emotions, um, that connection we feel. We tend to undermine it. So how can we now feel a stronger connection to that? Um, there are many ways, and a lot of us like to think in terms of meditation. We believe that if we meditate more, we'll have more connection. What I like to say about meditation is that in actuality, you are always connected. Whether you realize it or not, you are always connected. Meditating more, praying more, chanting more doesn't make you more connected. It doesn't make you more spiritual. It doesn't make you more anything. But what meditation does is that it kind of creates a gap in your intense life so that you have that moment, that time for that divinity to come through and remind you of your connection. What I like to do, instead of creating time for meditation, I like to live my whole life as if it's a meditation. I like for my whole day to be a meditation and instead of thinking in terms of, okay, let me set a time to meditate, I think in terms of the whole day is a meditation what are the things that disrupt the meditation? What are the things, what are the things in my life or in my day that take me out of that state? And then to reduce those or stop doing those. Instead of living a stressful life and then taking half an hour here or 20 minutes there to meditate and then to go back and live a stressful life. For me, that's almost pointless. So the point is for your life to be a prayer or a meditation. So. The thing to do 
the way to remove the things that make you feel disconnected, here's the clue. What drains your energy? When you are connected, you are flowing with energy. You are feeling buzzed. When you're disconnected, your energy is being drained. And it's kind of like if you think of your smartphone, you know, like if you have an iPhone, iPad, tablet, whatever, even a computer, and you connect it to a power source. When it's connected to a power source, it can just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. The minute you disconnect it to a power source, it's starting to, to drain resources. But there are certain things in your phone that take up more energy than other things. So it's like if you, if you put it on airplane mode, it can last a lot longer because it's not using the 3G, it's not using the Wi-Fi, there's a lot of things it's not using. And so the battery lasts a lot longer. Humans are, are exactly the same. The things that actually keep you energized are the things that keep you connected to your source, to your reality, to your truth, to your divinity, if you will. So if you are someone who is an artist, so just imagine this, if you're an artist or a musician and you have been led to believe that if you follow your heart, which means to follow your art, you've been led to believe that that's going to lead to poverty. So you have given up doing your art and instead you go take a job just to make money. That is going to drain your energy. But if you are a musician that spends your days making mu music or you're an artist that spends your days making art, you are going to be recharging yourself every single day, all the time. And you don't need to take time out to meditate. But if you're a musician who's given up their music or their art to go and take a job, you're going to feel stressed out all day because taking a job is going to drain you because you've taken a job that's a job. It's not a calling. Your calling is your art. And there's a big difference between a job and a calling. So if you're taking a job instead of following your calling, it's going to drain your energy. You're going to take out half an hour today, half an hour tomorrow to meditate, and you're going to feel good for those 30 minutes. But unless you act on the messages you get in your meditation, the messages being you should be following your heart. This is your true calling. You should give up that job. Unless you do those things, you're just undoing everything by continuing to go to a job that you hate instead of following your calling. Speaking of calling, your calling is your connection to your divinity. Your work, your life, what you do to make a living, um, if it's following your calling, and which is what I believe it needs to be, we all need to be encouraged to follow our calling. When we follow our calling, our batteries get recharged all the time. And because we have been led to believe that when we follow our heart, it leads to poverty, so many of us don't follow our dreams. We don't follow our calling. And we end up taking a job just to be able to pay the bills. So this is a reminder <clears throat> that you came here for a huge purpose and I want you to follow it. One other thing I want to speak, to, uh, I want to speak about is all everybody out there who are going through health challenges. Um, if you get a chance, please listen to my radio show from a couple of weeks ago. It was specifically about connecting with your divinity if you're going through a health challenge. I want you to know that um, even a health challenge is a message for you. It's a message for you to follow your heart. It's a message for you to connect and to find out who you are. One of the things that I have an issue with is the way our paradigm, our dominant paradigm is so medical focused that we seem to give our power away to, um, to medicine, to the big pharma, to the hospitals, to conventional medicine. And we believe what they have to say as opposed to what we are feeling inside. What you feel inside is what counts. Um, I'm not a big fan of constantly going to the doctor, constantly taking tests and so on, and have them tell me what is wrong or what is right with my body. Um, and this is the paradigm that we have bought into. It's so dominant in our culture. We, we get brainwashed into thinking that, 
um, that the only people that know about our health and our well-being are the experts out there. What I personally believe is that what we feel inside is what really matters. And this is why I hate words like remission. I would never use the word remission because it keeps people in that fear of cancer for, for years. When I would rather people feel, if, if, if you've just healed from a challenging illness like cancer, I would rather people just feel, I'm done with cancer and it's time for me to remember my mission. So if any doctor tells you you're in, in remission, just um, just turn it into it's time for me to remember my mission and get on with my life. Um, I also don't um, I don't agree with the way that in that whenever we're diagnosed with an illness, the first thing we have to deal with is the fear of the illness because fear actually um, drains us of our energy. And when we're dealing with a challenge, that's when, when we need our energy the most. I truly believe that if you're, if you're a healer, if you're a practitioner, medical practitioner, naturopath, whatever you are, if you're tuning in, if your um, clients, your patients, whoever are going through a medical challenge, you have to actually coach them through it so that they know that their bodies have the ability to heal, their bodies are smarter than they think, and they have to be discouraged from giving their power away to those outside of them. Not encouraged, but discouraged. Right now, when, we're, when we have a medical challenge, we tend to give our power away to the doctors, the hospitals, the test results, the scans, the machines. No, we have to, be, we have to believe that our bodies are much wiser than we believe. Our bodies have been capable enough to bring us from babyhood all the way to where we are today. It has the capacity to heal. It has the capacity for a lot. Um, it has the capacity for us to give birth to babies. Our bodies are much smarter than we give it credit for. And if healers can be more like coaches who incentivize and coach their patients or their clients through this and to give them a will to live, to help them to find their passion, that would be amazing. I know that um, what I want to remind you is that we are consciousness first. We are consciousness first, we are spiritual beings first, we are non-physical first, and the physical manifestation is a result. Not, it's not the other way around, it's not the way we think. We are consciousness first, physical as a result of consciousness. Not conscious stemming from physical, but physical stemming from consciousness. So even if we move from conventional medicine of which only focuses on the physical. And again, this is not about the doctors. I've had wonderful doctors treating me. I know science has done a lot. So it's not about trashing anyone. It's about all of us changing the paradigm. Even if we move from uh, realizing that there is more than conventional medicine, that it's not about just drugs and um, just taking drugs and, and so on, we have we seemed to have moved from conventional medicine to natural medicine. A lot of people are on herbal remedies and uh, different therapies and so on, which is great. We widen the net. We've gone into all kinds of therapies like essential oils and different kinds of cleansings, detox and so on. But what I want to say here is that it's all still manipulating the physical. One thing that is not spoken about enough is our spiritual connection, our connection to the divinity, our connection to the divine, the true purpose of why we came here, here, why we chose to be born here, why are we here expressing ourselves, who are we here to be, who, um, our will to live. We don't talk about these things. They're not spoken about because even if you switch from drugs and, and the conventional therapies over to natural therapies, if you don't have a will to live, if you don't have a passion for life, it's not going to help you. So I truly believe that the cure for cancer is not in the physical alone. It's not in medicine alone. We really, really 
have to connect more deeply with our inner guidance, connect more deeply with the divine. And one way to do that is to look at what drains you, what leaks your energy every day, whatever it is. And don't be afraid to admit what it is. It could be your job. It could even be your relationships. It could be certain things like maybe you're not being authentic. You're doing things to please people as opposed to doing things because you want to do them or because you love to do them. There could be all kinds of reasons. So how do you begin? I would say start a journal and make a list of two things or make two lists. One list, all the things in your life that drain you. Start from all the things from today. What drains you? What are the actions you do? What are the things you find you have to do day to day? Make a list of what drains you. Then in the other list, make a list of what really charges your batteries. What makes you feel good? What uplifts you? And what, um, and what you'll have from those lists is the things that uplift you are the things that connect you to your divine. The things that drain you are the things that disconnect you. Now you don't have to stop doing the things that drain you right away because some of them may be commitments and you may already be stuck in those commitments and you might want to honor them, but do it with a conscious mind that, okay, these are things I agreed to, but they do drain me doing them. So let me be aware next time before I commit to these things. I want you to do it with awareness. And next time before you commit to such things, maybe become aware so that you don't make the same mistake and increase the things that actually charge your batteries and make you feel more connected. That's the simplest way you could possibly do it, is just through awareness. And over time, we can talk more about uh, why or how you consistently get stuck doing things that drain you. And sometimes it may feel scary to even get out of commitments that you're already in, but we'll save that for another time. In the meantime, what I want to do is I want to take some of your questions. I want to thank you, first of all, all of you for tuning in. I want to thank you for your emojis and your love and your heart. I love you, every single one of you. And I'm going to ask Milena to shout a few questions at me. Okay. Lisa's asking, how can we be sure what our calling is? Thank you. Okay. So, what will help you is something like the journal that I just said, because, and when you know, you know, if you're not sure, it means it's not your calling. Truly, when you know, you know. So if you're in doubt about anything, it's not your calling. It's as simple as that. Jack asks, how can we break bad habits? So the way to break bad habits, I say, is to increase the good ones. Don't focus on the bad habits. Um, but think of things that you would like to adopt, new habits that you would like to adopt, good habits, things that you wish you would do. Write them down, remind yourself every day to do those things and keep increasing the good habits and the bad habits will stop being an issue. Um, Gail is asking, she's saying, my daughter feels great, uh, but the inoperable tumor didn't respond to chemo or radiation. Couldn't she still have unresolved issues that keep the cancer there, even though she feels the happiest and most optimistic she ever has? Um, so she feels great, but well, if she feels great, that is amazing. And if she's not in pain, that is amazing. What I would encourage her to do is not worry so much about the unresolved issues, but to spend her time doing things that she loves to do and to, um, and to increase her reasons for being alive. The fact that she's happy is fantastic. Keep doing what she's doing. And my sense is if she keeps doing what she's doing, she will live for as long as she's meant to live. And um, yeah, and just keep staying happy, connecting with people she loves. I think that's fantastic. Thank you for your question. Marcella asks, what do you do when it is your teen's behavior that drains you? <laughs> when it is your teen's behavior that drains you. I love that. Now, the thing I always advocate is love them for who they are, not for who you want them to be. So what I would uh, suggest to you is you don't have to subject yourself to that behavior all the time. If you need to take yourself away, do that. 
your priority is to take care of yourself because the more agitated you are, the more your teen will pick up on that and, and act out accordingly. So your priority is to do whatever it takes to take care of yourself, even if it means taking time out to soak in a tub, go for a massage, whatever it costs, it's worth it. So take care of yourself. That has to be your number one priority from here on. And when you start to feel a lot calmer, a lot better, and a lot better about yourself, I have a feeling your teen's behavior will change as well. Lisa asks a common recurring question. Um, what if you are being your authentic self, but someone does not like you as yourself and becomes hurtful? Um, then that means that the person, um, when the person doesn't like you, it means that you're not, uh, uh, okay, so when I started to become my authentic self, I did lose some friends at that time. And it's a risk you do take. And the people who are your friends at that time, if you lose them, if you lose those friends, it means they didn't love you for who you are. It means they weren't true friends. The people who stuck by me wanted me to be my authentic self, whatever it was. And then, and even the people I lost, they eventually came back because I had to get really comfortable in being myself. The only time where you feel really uncomfortable is during the time when you are trying to fit into this new authentic self that you're discovering and you're not totally comfortable because you haven't tried it on yet and the circle around you, your circle of friends, are the friends you've accumulated when you were not being yourself and now you want to be more yourself so you're changing and you're not 100% confident and they're also feeling a bit unsure as to who you're becoming. So your work is to get clear on who you are, get clear on who you are, and then wear it with confidence. And those who love you, they'll stick by you. And I think that um, that's, I think we should call it, call it a day here. Um, <laughs> So I want to thank you, every single one of you, for tuning in, for listening in. I love you, all of you, wherever in the world you've tuned in from. I know there's a bunch of you that tune in from Australia. Thank you and God bless you. I love you. There's a bunch of you from India. There's a bunch of you from France. I know because you guys write into me and, of course, a whole bunch of you locally here in the U.S. and in Canada and, and a whole bunch of you in different parts of Europe and South Africa. I love hearing where you're from. Please, 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 when you write a comment under this video, please tell me where you're from. And if I've said anything that is of interest to anyone you know, if you think it will help anybody that you know, please feel free to share this video with them, please. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Stay lucky, stay blessed on this beautiful Friday the 13th. Thank you.